Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Arun and in this video I will present a two hour SAP course covering various significant aspects of SAP and its products. This course can be beneficial for someone who wants to learn about SAP. You might be a student, a recent graduate or even an experienced professional looking to get some insights about SAP products and topics around it. I have also provided a PDF document along with this course that contains notes and links to websites that we discuss in this course. So don't forget to download and use it throughout the course. The link to download the PDF is available in the video description. This is the course agenda. Chapter 1 will start with an overview of SAP's history. In Chapter 2, I will discuss different types of SAP products including on-premises and cloud. Chapter 3 will discuss SAP technical architecture. Chapter 4 is about SAP ABAP. Chapter 5 will cover what happens in an SAP project. Chapter 6 will discuss the types of jobs that are available in the SAP field. Chapter 7 is about how to learn SAP using both free and paid resources. Chapter 8 will talk about how to access free SAP trial systems. And finally in Chapter 9 we are going to discuss about how to get a job in the SAP field. So without any further ado, let's get into the course. Chapter 1 Overview of SAP's history. SAP stands for System Analysis and Program Development. Five former IBM software engineers founded it in 1972. During that time, data was converted into numbers and stored as punch cards. A punch card reader was then used to read the data from these punch cards and the computers processed them. As you can imagine, it was a time consuming and complex process. Then came SAP R1 where the letter R stands for real-time. Instead of storing the data on punch cards mechanically, as IBM did, SAP kept it locally in the electronic system while using a common logical database for all activities of the organization. This was a game-changer then, and SAP was the first company to create enterprise software that was stored locally on the computer. Then SAP enhanced its R1 application to develop R2 and R3 in the coming years which fueled the company's growth massively. R1 means all three layers such as the presentation, application and database are stored in the same server. It is based on a single tier architecture. In the R2 architecture, presentation and application layers will be present in one server whereas the database layer will be in a separate database server. It is based on a two tier architecture model. In the R3 architecture, all three layers are present in different systems. For example, the presentation layer would sit on a user's computer in the form of SAP GUI, which is a client software that is used to access the SAP system. The application would sit on a different server and the database would sit on a different server. It is based on a three-tier architecture model. And most of the modern applications are based on this three-tier architecture model. This table shows the timelines of the evolution of SAP's ERP software application. R1, R2 and R3 were a massive success and then during the 1990s, SAP released different versions of the R3, enhancing its business processes. Then SAP ECC was introduced in 2005 and the latest generation ERP software application that can run on an in-memory database was called SAP S4 HANA was introduced in 2015. Then the software as a service version of S4HANA was released in 2016. Since then, SAP has released many updates for both the on-premise and cloud versions of S4HANA. SAP's on-premise products were developed using a programming language called ABAP. ABAP stands for Advanced Business Application Programming. It is a programming language developed by SAP specifically to build SAP products. From R3 till S4HANA, 99% of their on-premise products are developed using ABAP programming language. The remaining 1% uses Java. SAP recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. Now it has more than 400 products, among which a lot of them are cloud-based software-as-a-service products. It has got about 440,000 customers in 180 countries. It has got about 110,000 employees about 23,000 partners who either resell SAP products or offer their services to implement SAP products. It has got offices in more than 100 locations around the world 
and it has got a revenue of about 28 billion euros making it the third largest software company in the world here are some incredible stats about sap's customers sap has become so popular that it is used by most top companies worldwide including apple and microsoft let's look at some of the remarkable statistics of sap customers 99 of the 100 largest companies in the world are sap customers sap customers produce 64% of the world's ice creams sap customers distribute 70, 78% of the world's food 98% of the 100 most valuable brands in the world are sap customers sap customers produce 77% of the world's beer 86% of global fortune 500 companies are sap customers SAP customers make 52% of the world's movies. SAP customers produce 70% of the world's chocolates. And many more of these stats about SAP customers are available online. This shows how popular SAP is among massive organizations in the world. You can learn more about SAP's history from its official website. I have provided the link in the PDF so that you can download as part of this course. Chapter 2: Overview of SAP Products. SAP has got more than 400 products in its portfolio. They are a mix of on-premise, software as a service and platform as a service products. It won't be possible to talk about each product of SAP, but this is the list of some of the most widely popular SAP products that we are going to discuss in this course. We got SAP on-premise products. So we are going to talk about SAP Business Suite, ERP Central Component which is also known as ECC, Customer Relationship Management, Supplier Relationship Management, Supply Chain Management. product life cycle management sap hana which is the in memory database sap solution manager and the next generation erp software sap s for hana we are also going to take a look at some of the sap's cloud products like s for hana cloud c for hana ariba integrated business planning sap success factors conquer field glass analytics cloud business technology platform and sap cloud application life cycle manager which is also known as calm So first let's take a look at the SAP's on-premise products. The first one in the list is SAP Business Suite. SAP Business Suite is not just one product. It consists of multiple SAP software applications that can be tightly integrated to provide organizations with a seamless flow of business processes across their multiple departments. SAP's Business Suite consists of five software applications. They are SAP ECC, CRM, SRM, SEM and PLM. Let's take an imaginary company as an example. The company will require software to manage their finances, run payroll and perform other resource planning activities for which they can use SAP ECC. They must take care of their customers, make sales and do marketing for which they can use SAP CRM. To manage their vendors, they can use SAP SRM, ensure their supply chain is efficient using SAP SEM and develop and manufacture products using SAP PLM. All these applications can be tightly integrated not just from a technical perspective but also from a business process perspective so that there is a seamless flow of information across multiple departments. They are based on on-premise technology and can run on a different variety of databases such as Microsoft SQL Server, IBM DB2, Oracle Database, Sybase, MaxDB and SAP's in-memory database called SAP HANA. Nowadays the SAP business suite of products is considered legacy applications since they are superseded by next generation ERP called SAP S4 HANA and other cloud products that SAP acquired in recent years. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP ERP Central Component which is in short called as SAP ECC. SAP ECC was SAP's core ERP product until it was replaced by SAP S4 HANA. SAP ECC 6.0 which was released in 2005 is the successor of SAP R3. The latest enhancement package version of SAP ECC 6 is EHP 8. The enhancement pack can be considered as a new version of the existing software application that contains new functionalities and bug fixes. From S4 HANA, the new software versions are called releases. For example, the latest release of S4 HANA is called as S4 HANA 2022. While R3 consisted of a three-tier architecture, SAP ECC was developed using service-oriented architecture. Service oriented architecture in short which is known as SOA is a software development methodology that uses software components called services to create business applications. 
For example, some business processes within an organization require user authentication functionality. Instead of rewriting the authentication code for all your business processes, you can create a single authentication service and reuse it for all your applications. SAP ECC consists of different types of modules and submodules, which consists of multiple transactions. These are the modules that are included in SAP ECC. A module is a specific business processes that is required to operate a specific part of a company. For example, SAP Finance is a module that exists within SAP ECC, which is used to run the financials of a company. The finance module consists of sub-modules such as general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, bank accounting and asset accounting. The accounts payable sub-module contains multiple transactions such as MIRO which is used to enter incoming invoice, MIGO which is used for goods movement, FPL9 which is used to display account balance and CAA1 which is used to create contract account and there are so many more. And the same thing applies to all other modules in the SAP ECC system. SAP plans to end maintenance support for SAP ECC in 2027, requiring customers to migrate to S4HANA by 2027. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Customer Relationship Management. CRM is an abbreviation for Customer Relationship Management. It is, as the name suggests, a software that is used to manage a company's customer relationships. It enables businesses to focus on individual customers, not only when they make a purchase, but also throughout their relationship with the brand. Assume that you own an SAP consulting firm, for example. When it comes to maintaining relationship with customers, you may be required to do a range of tasks, such as managing marketing campaigns, generating leads, storing customer contact information, managing sales opportunities, converting those opportunities into sales, managing customer issues, and receiving feedback from customers relating to the service you offered them. CRM software will assist you in carrying out these tasks more effectively and efficiently. These activities may differ depending on the type of product or service a company sells, but the core activities related to customer management will remain consistent. There is a plethora of CRM software available on the market. Salesforce, SAP, Microsoft and Oracle are the market leaders in this space but there has been an influx of small niche players into the market in recent years. They are doing exceptionally well, particularly when it comes to serving small and medium-sized businesses. Now let's take a look at the CRM software that SAP has got to offer. SAP provides several CRM applications in both cloud and on-premise models. In 1990, SAP offered CRM functionality embedded within the R3 application. Later in 2000, SAP released CRM 2.0, its first standalone CRM software. SAP CRM 7.0, the on-premise version of SAP's CRM application, is the most recent version. It is built on the NetWeaver platform. It offers functionalities related to sales, marketing, service, customer interaction and channels. CRM 7.0 EHP4 is the most recent enhancement pack version. CRM 7.0 can also run on the SAP's HANA database. Enhancement Pack 2 is the minimum version required for it to run on the HANA database. SAP Customer Relationship Management has four primary areas of focus, marketing, sales, service, and channels. These are the functionalities that are covered under each area. I won't go into the details of each functionality, but if you'd like to learn more, then please use the following link in the next slide to get more information. CRM 7.0 is supported until December 31, 2025, after which SAP recommends that customers migrate to SAP C4HANA, its next-generation cloud-based CRM solution. We will discuss about C4HANA in this course as well. The next product we are going to discuss is Supplier Relationship Management. Firstly, let's take a look at what SRM means from an organizational standpoint. SRM stands for Supplier Relationship Management, and it is essentially a software that is used to manage an organization's relationship with its suppliers. Suppliers, also known as vendors, are critical components of any business. The number of suppliers a company must deal with varies depending on its size. Assume you own and operate a retail store, for example. Product manufacturers, packaging box manufacturers, marketing agencies, courier service providers, 
website developers, software providers, and possibly a few others would be suppliers for your company. In a nutshell, a supplier is a person or business that supplies you with goods or services, which in turn will assist you in selling your goods and services. To maintain a long-term relationship with its suppliers, it is essential for any business to effectively manage them. The application of SRM software comes into play at this point. Netweaver technology underpins the SRM on-premise application. Enhancement Pack 4 is the most recent enhancement pack of for SRM. It can run on a variety of databases including Microsoft's uh, SQL Server, Oracle, IBM's DB2, MaxDB and the SAP HANA's in-memory database. To achieve end-to-end -end procurement business process operations, SRM 7.0 is typically integrated with the MM module, which is known as Materials Management in ECC or s hana Purchase requisitions, purchase order management, goods receipt, material management invoices, financial invoices, and open item clearings are all part of the end-to-end -end procurement activities. SAP's Supplier Relationship Management System is far less complex than most of its other modules. While dealing with suppliers can be difficult, especially when dealing with a supply chain involving dozens of other companies, it is usually easier than dealing with internal affairs and customer accounts. This software addresses five major concerns. The first one is spend analytics. Spend analytics examines how much you spend on suppliers and look for ways to reduce those costs. Next one is sourcing. It is a high level functionality that aids in the automation of sourcing processes including contract management and meeting any compliance standards. The next one is contract management. This functionality helps manage contracts on the supplier side. It can also be used to identify which suppliers are more likely to breach a contract, which can have a significant impact on your profitability. The next one is operational procurement. This covers requests from various parts of the company and makes it easier to fill those needs as needed. Invoice management. Finally, the invoice management module assists you in keeping track of payments owed to suppliers. SAP SRM 7.0 mainstream maintenance will end on December 31, 2027. Following that, SAP recommends that customers transition to its cloud-based procurement application, SAP Ariba. SAP S4 HANA also contains procurement and logistic modules. More information about SAP SRM 7.0 is available at the following link that you can see on the slide. The next product we are going to discuss is Supply Chain Management. Supply Chain Management, or SCM, refers to the process of centrally managing the flow of goods from raw materials to the finished products. As an example, consider a t-shirt manufacturing company. Their supply chain would entail activities such as sourcing cotton threads, buttons and labels from various vendors. Those raw materials are then combined in the factory to make the t-shirts, which are then shipped to warehouses. They are distributed to various wholesalers from those warehouses. The wholesalers will then distribute them to retail stores, who in turn will sell them to their end users. This is a simplified example, but large organizations' supply chain processes are much more complicated because they must deal with thousands of suppliers like this and complex transportation requirements. So, supply chain management software is essentially a software or a set of software that assists organizations in managing these end-to-end -end supply chain processes efficiently. Now let's take a look at the software components of SAP SCM 7.0. It contains SAP Enhancement Pack 4 for SAP SCM 7.0, SAP SCM Server, which in turn contains SAP Advanced Planning and Optimization, APO, and SAP Supply Network Collaboration, SNC. It also contains SAP Extended Warehouse Management, EWM, SAP Event Management, EM, and SAP SCM Optimizer. Now let's take a look at these components one by one. The first one is SAP SCM Server. The Supply Chain Management Server is an application suite that is part of the SAP Supply Chain Management application suite. It is a sophisticated planning and scheduling tool that supports real-time decision-making and collaborative network optimization across the extended supply chain. SAP SCM Server enables businesses to improve customer service and order fulfillment by synchronizing their supply chain activities with their partners. The next one is SAP Advanced Planning and Optimization, APO. APO provides a fully integrated set of functions for planning and executing supply chain processes. 
APO is compatible with the following. It allows strategic, tactical and operational business planning, cooperation between partners at all stages of the supply chain processes, from order receipt and stock monitoring to final product shipping. It cultivates customers and business partner relationships. It provides constant optimization and evaluation of the supply chain network's efficiency. APO employs embedded SAP BI in conjunction with SAP Live Cache to improve the performance of forecasting and replenishment tasks. The next one is SAP Supply Network Collaboration. SAP Supply Network Collaboration, or also known as SNC, is an application that enables participants in a complex supply chain network to effectively collaborate with each other. SNC helps with inventory management by suppliers and customers, timely replenishment shipments, advanced shipping notifications, and invoice creations, among other things. It also helps with forecasting and work order collaboration. The next one is SAP Extended Warehouse Management, or also known as EWM. EWM is a sophisticated warehouse management solution that works in tandem with SAP ECC, or S4HANA. EWM gives you more control over your warehousing processes and the tools you need to improve warehouse efficiency, transform your operations, and boost your competitiveness. EWM enables flexible and adaptive planning and coordination, as well as inbound and outbound processing execution, thereby consolidating the process flow across the entire supply network. EWM addresses the specific needs of fulfillment operations in all warehousing environments. EWM provides advanced storage and fulfillment support that was previously only available in non-integrated niche solutions. The advanced capabilities provided aim to dramatically improve service levels while reducing working capital and labor. The next one is SAP Event Management or also known as EM. The EM allows you to process application objects in different application systems and thus track events for individual objects, processes or parts of this across the entire supply chain. Event management can connect, update, and evaluate event messages with supply chain network application data. Event management in conjunction with SAP Supply Network Collaboration can be used to monitor these processes. This is based on events that are expected to occur in a process by specific dates and times. Actual event delays result in alerts. The next one is SAP SEM Optimizer. The SEM Optimizer component provides optimization engines for the majority of SEM applications. The SEM optimizer can be used for detailed production scheduling, supply network planning, supply demand matching, transportation planning, vehicle scheduling, and sequencing. Each optimizer employs a specialized algorithm to achieve the best possible planning results for the various applications. As you can see, SAP's SEM solutions includes several powerful applications that are more than capable of managing any organization's supply chain operations. Many of these applications include predictive analytics and machine learning, which allows businesses to predict consumer behavior in advance. Walgreens, for example, is a major pharmaceutical company in the United States. They manage their supply chain operations with SAP's SEM solution. It employs analytics to predict customer behavior and scales up to meet expected demand. For example, they forecast flu patterns based on location, allowing them to forecast the required inventory for over-the-counter flu medicines in specific locations during a specific time of the year. This process assists the company in reducing excess inventory while also lowering the costs associated with transportation and warehouse storage. SEM 7.0 will go out of support towards the end of 2027. SAP has introduced products like S4HANA Procurement, Logistics, EWM, TM, SAP Ariba, IBP that can be used as a replacement for the on-premise SEM product. Please use the following links you can see on the slide to learn more about the SAP SEM suite of applications. The next product we are going to discuss is Product Lifecycle Management or also known as PLM. Any product goes through various stages of development, including planning, design and engineering, manufacturing, transportation, providing service, and disposal or recycling. If the product is digital, the stages will be slightly different, such as requirement analysis, design, development, testing, launch, and upgrade or maintenance. Organizations require efficient processes and tools to successfully manage each phases of a product's life cycle whether it is a physical product or a digital product. They must work on these stages efficiently to streamline their production process and reduce production costs. 
large organizations worldwide use SAP PLM to manage the development life cycle of both physical and digital products. It has a wide range of capabilities required for successful product development such as costing, product engineering, product development tools, project management and much more. SAP PLM is available in several editions. One is an older version that is part of the business suite. It is built on NetWeaver technology and can work with multiple databases including SAP HANA. The most recent PLM capabilities are available as part of the SAP S4 HANA. Now let us take a look at the PLM capabilities. The first one is portfolio and project management. PLM includes project management capabilities that can be used to manage a product development project. Product development processes, project tasks, proposals, timelines, commercial project management and project network are all supported by the project management capabilities. The next one is product costing. This functionality is used to determine a product's cost by considering various factors. It has pricing features, the best target price, profitability prediction and cost simulation. The next one is product development. PLM offers a 3D viewer to help engineers get a visual simulation of their product development. It can be integrated with design software like CAD to assist the development process. Product engineering. This feature enables multiple teams to collaborate while working on the same project. It gives individual members or groups of people in a team secure and easy access to all product development information. Product compliance. Depending on the type of products you manufacture and the industry and customers you serve, your product must comply with various regulations. PLM allows you to manage product compliance regulations, registrations, classifications, labels and documents in one place. The final one is integration. PLM can be integrated with other SAP applications such as ECC to retrieve finance and master data related information. It can be integrated with CRM to retrieve customer information, with SRM to retrieve supplier and raw material information, with SEM to retrieve supply chain and transportation related information, and business intelligence for analytical purposes. Integrating with other SAP applications enables an organization to complete the manufacturing business processes from start to finish. s hana Digital Manufacturing and s hana Research and Development Engineering modules will replace the legacy SAP PLM product after 2027 when it goes off support. Use the links that you can see on the slide to learn more about SAP PLM. The next product we are going to discuss about is SAP Solution Manager or also known as Solman. Solution Manager is one of SAP's most well-known products. If you are a part of the SAP ecosystem, you have almost certainly come across Solution Manager in some capacity. So what is the function of Solution Manager? SAP Solution Manager is an application lifecycle management software. ALM software consists of tools and processes that aid in managing a software product's lifecycle from design to the end of life. A software product's lifecycle includes requirements gathering, building, testing, deploying and operating. As a result, ALM software provides tools to assist us in managing all these different phases of a software product. In other words, ALM is a software used to manage the development and operation of other software. You can use SAP Solution Manager to manage both SAP and non-SAP products. Now let's take a quick look at the evolution of Solution Manager. Solution Manager has been around for quite some time. Its first version, which is Solution Manager 2.1, was released roughly about 20 years ago in 2001. Since then, Solution Manager versions have progressed from 2.2 to 3.1, 3.2, 4.0, 7.0, 7.1, .0, and 7.2 being the most recent and advanced version. It could initially only perform some essential system monitoring functions. However, the most recent Solution Manager has come a long way, and it can now run on the HANA database and has Fiori as the user experience. It is also jam-packed with features that can be used to manage both technical and business process related operations of SAP products. Another intriguing aspect of Solution Manager is that customers are not required to purchase license to use it. If you want to use any SAP software, you must buy licenses, but Solution Manager usage rights are included in the SAP support contract. Now let's talk about Solution Manager's core functionality. Many customers only use Solution Manager for one purpose, which is to send data about their SAP landscape to SAP. That is what this image depicts. 
I've also created another image that represents the same concept differently, making it easier to explain what it means to send data to SAP. As shown in the diagram, an organization may have various SAP systems, such as ACC, S4HANA, BW, CRM, and also cloud products such as SAP SuccessFactors and Ariba. They are all linked to Solution Manager, which is also a component of their SAP environment. The Solution Manager then gathers data about all of these SAP systems. It may collect data on various topics including license conception, customer used functionalities, technical performance indicators, and business process performance indicators. A batch job, also known as a background job, regularly runs in the Solution Manager and collects this information, which are in turn being sent to SAP. SAP then stores that data in the appropriate customer profiles. Each customer has their file in the customer profile, distinguished by unique customer numbers. Assume you log into the Early Watch Alert workspace, for example. To access the Early Watch Alert workspace, you need to enter your S user ID. Your S user ID is linked to the company's customer number for which you work. So based on that customer number, it automatically pulls the correct information about your SAP landscape from the customer profile. This is one of the solution manager's primary functions. Customers will be unable to send information about their SAP systems to SAP and will be unable to use tools such as maintenance planner unless this configuration is completed. For example, a maintenance planner is a tool the customer must use to upgrade their SAP system. So if their solution manager does not send data to SAP, the maintenance planner will not function properly and they will be unable to upgrade their SAP systems. Apart from this core functionality, Solution Manager has many other features. These can be referred to as tools, functions, functionalities, or features. They are all the same thing. Let's call them functionalities in this tutorial for the sake of consistency. Application operations, business process operations, data volume management, change control management, custom code management, IT service management, process management, project management, test suite, Focused build and focused insights are the various types of functionalities available in Solution Manager 7.2. Let's take a look at these functionalities one by one. The first one is Applications Operations. This component includes a variety of sub-functionalities such as system monitoring, integration monitoring, user experience monitoring, root cause analysis, and a few other dashboards. It is based on automated checks that are carried out at regular intervals. Four distinct categories are monitored, such as availability, performance, exceptions, and configurations. Several metrics and thresholds are monitored in each category, and these metrics can be tailored to the customer's needs. System Monitoring The SAP Solution Manager System Monitoring application provides an overview of the current status of technical systems, including database and service. Integration Monitoring As the name suggests, this functionality is used to monitor the technical integration between multiple SAP systems or between SAP and non-SAP systems. User Experience Monitoring This functionality aids in monitoring system performance and availability from the end user's perspective. When a user accesses an SAP system, an automated script is run on the user's desktop or laptop or mobile device to monitor the connection. The data is then sent to the Solution Manager who uses it to measure and monitor these metrics. Root Cause Analysis this feature assists us in determining the root cause of a technical issue in an SAP system. When customers first use Solution Manager, they typically implement tools and application operations. This allowed them to implement something quickly while saving manual effort in monitoring the SAP systems. The next functionality is Business Process Monitoring. This feature is used to track the performance of critical business processes. As previously stated, Business processes have multiple steps that must be monitored to ensure that they are carried out correctly. You can define metrics and set alerts to notify you of business process problems. Interface Monitoring This functionality tracks the technical integration of multiple SAP or uh, SAP and non-SAP systems. For example, suppose you purchased a S4HANA system and integrated it with SuccessFactors. The integration monitoring tool can then monitor the integration and movement of information between these two systems. You can configure alerts to notify you automatically when the integration fails or the flow of messages between these two systems stops. Job Scheduling Management 
A background job is a set of operations that run in the background of an SAP system without interfering with normal operations. An SAP system may have hundreds of jobs. And if you have multiple SAP systems in your landscape, this may add up to a few hundred jobs that you want to keep consistent. As a result, job scheduling management allows you to manage all your SAP background jobs from a single location so that they can be easily monitored and managed without having to log into multiple SAP systems. Data Consistency Management This tool ensures that correct and up-to-date data is maintained at all times between SAP systems. An organization's SAP landscape typically consists of multiple SAP systems, with data flowing between them all. Data transferred from one system to another can become corrupted or inconsistent due to technical errors. This will result in data inconsistencies, which will impact business operations. As a result, this tool will assist you in preventing, detecting, investigating, and correcting data consistencies in your SAP landscape. Business Process Improvement You can monitor an SAP system's key performance indicators using a Business Process Improvement tool. SAP provides thousands of standard KPIs, which are known as Key Performance Indicators, that can be monitored with this tool to provide transparency into how your business operations are performing and where the bottlenecks exist. Key performance indicators include the number of open items in accounts payables or receivable, how many purchase order items were created after an invoice was issued, and so on. Business Process Performance Optimization As previously stated, an end-to-end -end business process consists of several steps. To complete a business process, all of those steps must perform optimally. Business Process Performance Optimization BPPO, will assist you in detecting any performance issues in one or more stages of an end-to-end -end business process. The next functionality we are going to discuss about is Data Volume Management. Data Volume Management, also known as DVM, is one of the solution manager's most essential features. This tool assists you in managing the size of an SAP system's database by providing guidance on which data can be archived or deleted. It includes information about the system's top application areas, which means which application areas such as finance, sales, and logistics contain the most data in the system. It provides information about the system size, largest tables, and the age of the records stored in tables, and also offers recommendations on data reductions options. Change control management. Before discussing change control management, I need to discuss changes in an SAP system and transports so that the entire change control management tool will make sense. SAP on-premise systems typically consists of three systems in a landscape, and they are known as the development system, testing, and production system. You use the development system whenever you want to make a configuration change or create a new program. The changes you have made must then be transferred from the development system to the test system, and finally to the production system, using a virtual container known as transport. As a result, the solution manager's change control management functionality can manage these changes in an SAP landscape. It is capable of much more than this, but this is a high-level overview of its capabilities. Custom Code Management This feature allows you to manage all the custom codes in SAP system. A custom code is essentially a non-standard program that the customers create or a standard program that the customers modifies in their SAP system. This custom code management functionality allows you to monitor and manage the entire lifecycle of custom developments. From the requirements, to the ret retirement of the programming code. You can also optimize your custom developments on an ongoing basis, monitor implementation, and track usage and quality. IT Service Management IT Service Management, also known as ITSM, is the process by which IT manages the end-to-end -end delivery of IT services to customers. This includes all the functions and activities involved in designing, developing, delivering, and supporting IT services. A typical scenario would be a user encountering a performance issue in one of the SAP systems. As a result, they cannot carry out their regular duties. The user logs into the ITSM portal and opens a ticket with as much details as possible. The ticket would be then routed to the IT team's queue, where incoming requests are prioritized and addressed. It is used for more than just essential IT support. It can also manage all types of workplace technology from hardware to service requests and business-critical software applications. Process Management This feature assists you in documenting and managing your SAP business processes from start to finish. Business processes are comprised of a series of steps 
usually documented in a Word or a Visio document. Using the Solution Manager's process management functionality, we can store them as documents or define them in a modeling environment using drag and drop virtual boxes. This allows you to manage your business processes holistically and business documentation and system reality are always in sync. Project Management This component incorporates features from SAP's Project and Portfolio Management product. You can manage any project, whether SAP or non-SAP, from project initiation to project closer using functionality such as project time management, resource management, status updates, project preparation, scoping, scheduling, and so on. Test Management Suite SAP Solution Manager includes a comprehensive test suite with various functionalities for performing end-to-end -end testing of SAP and non-SAP applications. It is capable of performing both manual and automated testing. You can use the Test Management Suite to perform tasks such as determining the testing scope, test planning, testing, and transferring changes to production. It can also be used with other test management software such as Tricentis, HPQC, and QTP. Focused Build Focused Build is a Solution Manager 7.2 add-on that can be installed on it. It provides standard out-of-the-box capabilities for managing requirements and software development in large agile projects. In other words, it provides predefined templates for managing SAP and non-SAP projects. Focused Insights Focused Insights, like Focused Build, provides predefined out-of-the-box templates and dashboards. Customers will save time and effort by not creating dashboards from scratch. They can instead use these predefined dashboards that are available to them readily uh, with the help of Focused Insights. So what are the benefits of using Solution Manager? Solution Manager is a single integrated tool that can perform end-to-end -end application lifecycle management, from monitoring the technical aspects of the systems to improving business processes, managing projects, managing changes, providing ITSM functionalities, custom code, and sending the required information to SAP. It does not require additional licenses, and SAP Solution Manager usage rights are included in the SAP support contract. As a result, it saves license costs associated with using multiple third-party ALM tools and lowers the total cost of ownership of SAP systems. It can manage SAP as well as non-SAP applications. It is also capable of managing both cloud and on-premise applications. SAP Solution Manager 7.2 can be hosted on any hyperscaler such as Microsoft Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud and uh, can also run on the HANA database. Solution Manager 7.2 employs Fiori as the front-end, resulting in a significantly improved user experience over its previous versions. But what are the difficulties with using Solution Manager? The implementation effort can be significant. As previously stated, Solution Manager contains hundreds of functionalities that enables customers to perform end-to-end -end application lifecycle management. But implementing all these functionalities can become complex and time-consuming especially when customers try to implement many features simultaneously. Keeping a solution manager up to date can be time consuming as well. Maintaining a solution manager to ensure all of its functionalities work optimally may require significant effort and resources, similar to implementation efforts. Because there are so many moving parts, dedicated resources are sometimes needed to keep the lights on, particularly if you have a large SAP landscape. End users will need extensive training to use Solution Manager functionalities. Suppose the Solution Manager is not configured correctly. In that case, there is a high risk that it will send incorrect information to SAP's customer profile, causing problems when using SAP's support tools such as Maintenance Planner and Early Watch Alert Workspace. Solution Manager 7.2 is supported by SAP until December 2027. SAP recommends that its customers base use Cloud Application Lifecycle Manager, which is also known as CALM, going forward. We will discuss about CALM in this course as well. If you would like to learn more about Solution Manager 7.2, please use the links that are shown in the slides. The next product we are going to discuss about is SAP HANA. SAP HANA, which stands for High Performance Analytic Appliance, is a multi-model database that keeps data in memory rather than on a disk. The column-oriented in-memory database design enables you to run advanced analytics alongside high-speed transactions. What is the significance of this? Because it allows businesses to process massive amounts of data 
with near zero latency query data in real time and become truly data driven sap hana is unique and significantly faster than other database management systems because it stores data in column based tables in main memory and combines online analytical processing olap and online transactional processing oltp sap hana was introduced in 2010 it is a modern and mature solution used by tens of thousands of customers worldwide however sap hana is much more than just a database sap hana provides advanced search analytics data integration capabilities for all types of data it also serves as an application server assisting businesses in developing intelligent insight driven applications based on real time data these capabilities are available in the cloud as well as the on premise version of sap hana sap hana simplifies it helps businesses innovate and lowers cost by combining multi data management capabilities and making all data instantly available from a single system so what is an in memory database an in memory database is a type of database that stores data in its main memory which is ram of a computer rather than on traditional disks or solid state drives while most databases now include more in memory capabilities they are still primarily disk based storage databases sap hana was designed from the ground up to work with data in memory first then rely on other storage mechanisms to balance performance and cost memory retrieval is much faster than retrieving data from a disk or an ssd resulting in split second response times in memory databases are used in applications that require high performance and that can handle large traffic spikes like telecommunication networks and banking systems in the last decade or so companies have begun to use in memory databases for a broad range of applications including real time analytics and predictive modeling customer experience management logistics and much more owing primarily to advancements in multi core processors and less expensive ram now let's take a look at the benefits of sap hana database sap hana provides far more advantages than simply storing serving and providing a single source of truth the following are the top 10 advantages of sap hana database hana database is versatile it supports hybrid transactional and analytical processing as well as a wide range of data types efficient offers a smaller data footprint with no data duplication advanced compression and data silos reduction effective uses a massively parallel processing database to query large data sets quickly scalable scales easily for data volume and concurrent users in a distributed environment they are flexible which means it can be deployed both in public or private clouds multiple clouds on premises or hybrid scenarios it is based on a simple model which means advanced data virtualization provides a single gateway to your data sap hana database is intelligent that means it has got machine learning capabilities which it adds to the applications and analytics secure it provides comprehensive data and application security fast setup and other features something to note is that sap s4 hana which is sap's next generation erp product can run only on the sap hana database and cannot run on any other database like its predecessors of like ecc and sap r3 sap hana is available in the cloud and the latest version of sap hana on premise is sap hana 2.0 If you would like to learn more about SAP HANA, please use the links that you can see on the slide. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP S4 HANA. It is one of the most important product in SAP's portfolio. SAP S4 HANA is an ERP business suite built on the SAP HANA in-memory database, which enables businesses to perform transactions and analyze business data in real time. S4 HANA is the centerpiece or the digital core of SAP's digital transformation strategy for its customers. S4 HANA which stands for Suit for HANA was introduced in 2015. It should not be confused with Suit on HANA and Suit on HANA refers to an ECC system that runs on a HANA database. On the other hand, Suit for HANA is a next generation ERP system that has been completely redesigned from the ground up. It has a simplified data model, lean functionalities and improved user experience based on Fiori and advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. It only works with SAP's in-memory database, SAP HANA. It is available in various editions, including on-premise, private, and public cloud editions. Let's take a look at the architecture of S4 HANA now. This is the high-level architecture of S4 HANA. On the right, you can see the devices used to connect to an S4 HANA system. 
because S4HANA uses Fiori as its user interface, it can be accessed via various devices such as mobile, tablet, laptop or desktop. When the connection is established, it is routed to the SAP Web Dispatcher. Web Dispatcher is the software interface that connects the internet to your SAP system. When an end user sends an HTTPS request, it is routed through the Web Dispatcher, determining whether the request should be accepted or rejected. When it agrees with the connection, it balances the server load to ensure an even distribution. As a result, SAP Web Dispatcher contributes to security while balancing the load in your SAP system. The connection then goes directly to the application server or the Fiori launchpad, depending on the type of request. Let's talk about SAP Gateway. SAP Gateway allows you to connect devices, environments, and platforms to SAP systems. It communicates using Open Data Protocol, which is also known as OData, which means you can connect to SAP and non-SAP applications using any programming language or model. S4HANA employs Gateway and OData services to translate business data from databases and present it through Fiori apps. The next one is SAP Application Engine. The application engine in S4HANA has a simplified data model. Because it does not require aggregates to process queries, the number of tables needed to perform day-to-day -day business operations is significantly reduced. As a result, a S4HANA system's memory footprint is reduced considerably. S4HANA can complete both OLAP and OLTP transactions as we discussed in the HANA DB section. CDS Views CDS is an abbreviation for Core Data Services. It is also referred to as the Code Pushdown Model. This means that some of the resource-intensive calculations are pushed down to the database layer, where they are executed in the database, and the results are transferred to the presentation layer, relieving the application server of the load and providing the best possible performance. SAP HANA Database as previously stated, S4HANA runs exclusively on the HANA database, SAP's in-memory, column-oriented relational database management system that combines OLTP and OLAP into a single system. We discussed about all of these things in the previous section of SAP HANA database. Evolution of SAP S4HANA. SAP ECC is S4HANA's predecessor. Its most recent enhancement pack version is 8 and it can run on various databases, including Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, MaxDB, and Sybase, as we discussed in the SAP ECC section. The suite on HANA followed in 2011. SAP introduced HANA database, its in-memory database. ECC can run on HANA database, thanks to Enhancement Pack 7. Although it could technically run on the HANA database, its functionalities were not optimized to take full advantage of the HANA database's in-memory capabilities. SAP introduced Simple Finance in 2015, with the 1503 version being the first. It is essentially a supplement to the ECC system. The ECC system must have an enhancement pack version of 7 or higher for the add-on to be installed. The add-on includes ECC's core finance functionalities, and the code was optimized to utilize HANA's in-memory capabilities fully. However, other ECC functionalities like logistics, procurement, etc., remained unchanged and were not optimized. SAP released S4 HANA, a fully optimized suite for HANA application, in November 2015. The initial release, 1511, contained only a few core functionalities, and more features and advanced technologies were added in the future releases. The current version was released in 2022. All modules in S4 HANA have been optimized to take full advantage of the in-memory capabilities of the HANA database and the Fiori user experience. Different types of modules available in SAP S4 HANA. Finance, Asset Management, Manufacturing, Research and Development Engineering, Sales and Distribution, Services, Sourcing and Procurement, and Supply Chain Management are among the modules included in S4 HANA. Although it contains these modules, the S4 HANA system must be supplemented with specific cloud applications to utilize them fully. For example, S4 HANA only includes core HR and time recording functionality in the HR space. You will need a success factors application if you want to use other features such as onboarding, recruitment, or if you want to run payroll. It provides over 25 industry solutions. 
industry solutions or add-ons that provide an organization with a tailored system with industry-specific business processes. Energy and natural resources, service industries, consumer industries, discrete industries, financial services and public services are among the categories that are covered in S4HANA. Please remember that not all industry solutions are available in the S4HANA public cloud version as yet. Let's talk about S4HANA releases. Every year, a new version of S4HANA is released with new features and bug fixes. The releases are labeled with four numbers, with the first two representing the year and the last two representing the month. S4HANA 1610, for example, was released in October 2016. S4HANA 1709 was released in September 2017. Since 2020, a new nomenclature has been used in which the month is not included in the release's name. For example, regardless of the month it is released, the most recent S4HANA release is S4HANA 2022, and the one that will be released in 2023 will be known as S4HANA 2023. SAP provides five years of support for each releases. For instance, the release 1709 will be supported until end of 2022. Now let's take a look at the key differences between S4HANA and an ECC system. Unlike SAP ECC, which can run on multiple databases, including Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, HANA, MaxDB, etc., S4HANA can run only on SAP's HANA database. S4HANA has been rewritten to utilize HANA's in-memory capabilities fully. As a result, S4HANA performs certain operations faster than its predecessors. S4HANA is available in several editions, including on-premise, private cloud, and public cloud. SAP ECC does not have a pure cloud version, but it can be hosted on hyperscalers like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. Some ECC functionalities were removed from S4HANA because there is a cloud product available as an alternative for those functionalities. Payroll, for example, is not available in S4HANA, because customers can run payroll using success factors employee central payroll instead. As a result, redundant functionality and database tables has been removed from S4HANA, resulting in a lean software. While S4HANA can technically be used with SAP GUI, which is an SAP's desktop client-based graphical user interface, customers must access it through SAP Fiori user experience to fully benefit from its capabilities. For example, functionalities such as Robotic process automation and embedded analytics cannot be used with SAP GUI. Fiori apps are also available for the ECC system, but their numbers and functionalities are limited. SAP claims that customers can reduce their data footprint by 50% using HANA's data compression technique. It also claims that compared to an ECC system, reports run 100 times faster in S4HANA. With the help of Fiori, S4HANA provides improved insights, forecasting, and user experience. S4HANA introduces numerous innovations, including embedded analytics, robotic process automation, and SAP Copilot, to name a few. SAP ECC does not support such innovations. The latest version of S4HANA is SAP S4HANA 2022. And if you'd like to learn more about S4HANA, please use the links that you can see on the slide. In the previous sections, we discussed some of the most commonly used SAP on-premise products. In this section, we are going to talk about SAP Cloud products. The first on that list is the SAP S4HANA Cloud. SAP S4HANA is offered in three different flavors. One is the on-premise version, which we discussed in the previous section, and the other is the private and public cloud editions. In the on-premise edition, the customer pays a one-time license fee, followed by yearly support fees to the SAP. In private and public cloud editions, the customer pays a monthly subscription which includes hosting fees, license fees, and support fees. The customer opting for the cloud editions will continue to pay these fees until they decide to terminate the contract. S4HANA Cloud Public Edition is a complete ERP system with an SAP-managed public cloud infrastructure. It is intended for new customers ready for a clean slate who want to begin their S4HANA project in the cloud. It's also a popular choice for subsidiaries of large enterprises running SAP on-premise systems, and any business looking to scale quickly with an all-in-one subscription-based solution. S4HANA Private Cloud Edition includes a dedicated cloud infrastructure managed either by SAP or one of the SAP's approved hyperscalers, such as Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, or AWS. Companies that require a system conversion or a selective data transition 
may choose the Esfahana private cloud version. This is the better option if your company requires a lot of customization. Now let's take a look at some of the differences between Esfahana private cloud and public cloud. The first one is infrastructure. Esfahana private cloud edition is hosted on SAP's data center or one of the SAP's approved hyperscalers. Customers have the option to choose the hosting provider. In the public cloud edition, it is hosted only on SAP data center. Type of implementation. Brownfield, selective data transition and greenfield implementation are supported in the private edition, whereas only greenfield implementation is possible in the public cloud edition. Flexibility. Customers can opt to bring their existing custom codes from ECC to S4HANA in the private edition. Customizations are not allowed. Only highly standardized business processes can be followed by the customers in the public cloud edition. License. The private cloud edition is a subscription based and the public cloud edition is also subscription based. Cost. The private cloud edition has higher total cost of ownership, whereas the public cloud edition has a lower total cost of ownership. Upgrades. For the private cloud edition, SAP releases one release per year, and SAP will do the upgrade for the customer on a jointly decided timeline. For the public cloud edition, there will be two major releases released in a year. SAP decides the times when those upgrades will be applied to the system. Responsibility Business processes, applications, middleware, and platform-related activities fall under the customer's responsibility, whereas infrastructure-related activities including network, OS, storage, and database are SAP's responsibility in the private cloud edition. Except for the business processes, everything else falls under SAP's responsibility in the public cloud edition. Suitability. The private cloud edition is suitable for large organizations that require flexibility and want to protect their existing custom codes. Whereas the public cloud edition is suitable for smaller organizations and subsidiaries who are satisfied with standard business processes. Implementation time. To implement S4HANA in private cloud, it will take about average of 18 months. Whereas it may take only three to six months to implement an S4HANA public cloud edition system. Use the following links to learn more about S4HANA private and public cloud editions. The next cloud product we are going to discuss is SAP C4HANA. SAP C4HANA, also known as Customer Experience Solutions, is a suite of marketing, sales and customer relationship management applications. SAP has acquired several CRM companies in the recent years, including Hybris, Gigia, Calidus Cloud and Core Systems. It also has its CRM products such as C4C, which is also known as Cloud for Customer, and S4HANA Public Marketing Cloud, which have all gone through various iterations. SAP decided it was time to create a single integrated solution under a new name, thus C4HANA was born. C4HANA, introduced in 2018, is essentially a rebranding of existing solutions from SAP's recently acquired enterprises. C4HANA is made up of five different cloud applications. SAP Commerce Cloud, SAP Sales Cloud, SAP Service Cloud, SAP Marketing Cloud, and SAP Customer Data Cloud are the names of these services. SAP claims that its customer experience portfolio covers every step of the customer journey, from the customer's first contact with the company to when they choose to buy from it. It goes above and beyond by providing excellent customer support to retain them as a customer for life. Let's look at the various products that comprises the C4HANA suite of solutions. First one is SAP Commerce Cloud. It is built on the previously known SAP Hybris Commerce platform and is available in both cloud and on-premise configurations. It is an omni-channel e-commerce solution that enables businesses to simplify their customers' purchasing processes by providing the best possible functionalities from search to sales. The following are some of the SAP Commerce Cloud core capabilities. Omnichannel Commerce SAP Commerce Cloud features the ability to monitor and track customers across multiple touch points. As a result, an omnichannel responsive storefront that encourages consistency across all devices, tailored promotions, and recommendations to increase customer engagement and sales is provided. Product Content Management As you might expect, an e-commerce store may contain various products. Commerce Cloud provides centralized product content management capabilities, 
allowing users to bulk edit, bulk publish, and bulk upload multiple products while saving time and ensuring consistency. Order management. Customers can order or return products via multiple channels, and everything is tracked and recorded. This process gives businesses a unified view of their inventory, shipping and returns, allowing them to provide a better customer experience. Industry-specific features. SAP Commerce Cloud offers out-of-the-box industry-specific add-ons tailored to specific industry needs. They are known as accelerators, essentially a set of business processes designed specifically for companies in a particular industry. Finance service accelerators, travel accelerators, citizen engagement accelerators, teleco and media accelerators, so many other are some of the examples of accelerators. SAP Commerce Cloud also includes website editing tools with drag and drop functionality. These tools allow users to quickly change the look and feel of a website and do not require extensive web development knowledge to redesign. Shopify, which is a very famous product, is one of the competitors of SAP Commerce Cloud solution. SAP Marketing Cloud. Marketing was not targeted before the technological era. Instead of a specific target audience, a product or service was widely advertised to almost everyone. As technology has advanced, we now have many tools, such as SAP Marketing Cloud, to assist businesses in performing targeted marketing. SAP Marketing Cloud is built on what was formerly known as SAP Hybris Marketing. It is available in both on-premise and cloud configurations. It provides a complete picture of the customer, including their intentions, motivations, and needs. The SAP Marketing Cloud uses this data to update an all-around profile for existing and potential customers constantly. This includes information on customers' past purchasing behavior, forecasts of possible future purchasing behavior, and focused interests. The solution tracks the customers' movements, which websites and apps they use, and whether they are more likely to contact a call center or a sales representative. Let's take a look at some of the key capabilities of Marketing Cloud. The first one is dynamic customer profiling. Discover, capture, and enrich customer profiles from all sources in a single view to gain insights into customers' real-time intents. Marketing planning and performance. Work across teams to provide real-time transparency into marketing plans, budgets, and performance. Audience, campaigns, and journeys. Accurately target and orchestrate cross-channel engagements to provide the personalized experience that customers expect lead and account-based marketing. Using close collaboration between sales and marketing, generate, nurture, and convert leads into revenue. Marketing analytics. This feature aids in understanding marketing performance and the factors that influence business success. SAP Service Cloud. We have been talking about the effects of technological advancements in e-commerce throughout this course. Customers can now interact with brands through a variety of channels. Customer satisfaction is more important than ever. According to statistics, customers will not return to a store or business that does not provide satisfactory customer service. On the other hand, keeping track of the numerous communication channels and diverse customer information is an ever-increasing challenge for service employees. Service agents require a highly advanced digital service solution such as SAP Service Cloud to better support them. SAP Service Cloud comprises several solutions, including SAP Hybris Cloud for Service, SAP Customer Engagement Center, and Core Systems Field Management Technology. SAP Service Cloud is more than a ticketing system or a call center app. It enables effective knowledge management because all customer data is available on a single platform for all departments. Service employees collaborate in a networked environment and always use up-to-date data. This enables real-time service analysis to be displayed on clear dashboards. They provide information on critical KPIs and give service managers a complete picture of their team's performance. Let us now examine the key features of SAP Service Cloud. The first one is Omnichannel Service. It enables service agents to manage all service inquiries in the same interface for a consistent experience. Intelligent Ticket Management. Service tickets can be created manually or automatically in response to an inbound email chat or SMS message. It also includes artificial intelligence and machine learning based functionalities such as automated ticket categorization and solution recommendation. Analytics and experience management. 
The service cloud includes a Qualtrics-based analytics and experience management solution. Analytics capabilities include the ability to track service performance and real-time analytics on agent workload, ticket completion rate, SLAs, and other relevant metrics. Using experience management, however, you can determine the root cause of customer satisfaction or dissatisfaction. Learning and knowledge management. This functionality provides learning tools to keep service agents updated with personal education and ad hoc training. Integration. To understand multiple touch points and improve customer experience, SAP Service Cloud can seamlessly integrate with other SAP and non-SAP solutions such as ECC, S4HANA, Commerce Cloud and Marketing Cloud. The next one is SAP Sales Cloud. SAP Sales Cloud combines SAP Hybris Cloud for Sales, SAP Subscription Billing and Calidus Cloud to assist organizations in connecting with and guiding customers throughout their purchasing journey. It provides a comprehensive and seamless user experience to assist businesses in engaging with their customers in real time. With the SAP Sales Cloud, companies can quickly turn valuable insights into practical action. Furthermore, the solution can aid in the nurturing of their customer relationships, giving them the best chance of converting their leads. It includes some advanced features that you would expect to find in a modern Salesforce automation solution, such as account, lead, and opportunity management. SAP Sales Cloud makes it simple to manage customer accounts by, pro by providing each sales representative with a 360 degree view of the customer and key contacts and a comprehensive view of engagement history, service history, and transaction history. It also includes intelligent scoring and routing to ensure that the best leads are assigned to the best sales representative. Sales Order Management Because the Sales Cloud integrates with SAP ECC and S4HANA, Product pricing and inventory information are available in real time. In addition, the solution has industry leading capabilities for product configuration, bundling, intelligent product, margin guidance, and compelling proposal generation. Mobile experience. SAP Sales Cloud has a responsive user interface that allows for a consistent user experience across multiple devices, such as laptops, tablets, and smartphones. Furthermore, the mobile application offers offline support, allowing sales representatives in the field to interact with the customers even when there is no network signal. Predictive Analytics and Machine Learning SAP Sales Cloud assists businesses in establishing lead and opportunity scoring based on various factors. Predictive analytics and machine learning technologies are used to automate them. It also includes embedded analytics and dashboards to assist sales managers in drilling down and gathering as much information as possible about sales opportunities and customers. Collaboration and Productivity SAP Sales Cloud allows for collaboration with social media channels. Feeds, for example, enable sales representatives to receive new feeds about accounts or leads they are interested in. SAP Sales Cloud can integrate with productivity applications such as MS Outlook, Google Gmail, and Lotus Notes to make the lives of sales representatives much easier. Lastly, SAP Customer Data Cloud. SAP Customer Data Cloud is a platform that stores customer data that other C4HANA solutions can access. This is based on Gigia's Customer Identity Management Solution, which was acquired by SAP in 2017. It provides features that collect data from known and unknown visitors to a company's website. This information is then used to gain insights about a specific customer, such as the products and services they are interested in, they inquired about or searched for, so that the company can ensure proactive customer engagement and deliver targeted advertisement and promotion campaigns. It also helps businesses ensure GDPR compliance, which is a general data protection regulation, a privacy law passed by the European Union. SAP Customer Data Cloud contains multiple sub-solutions. They are Customer Data Foundation, Customer Identity and Access Management, Partner Lifecycle Management, Consent and Preference Management. These solutions help companies to build trust and valued relationships with their customers, essentially turning unknown online website visitors into known loyal customers. If you would like to learn more about C4HANA or Customer Experience Solutions, please use the links that you can see on the slide. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Success Factors. 
SAP Success Factors is one of the world's most widely used human resource applications. It is a cloud-based tool that is available as software as a service and customers pay a subscription fee to gain access to the hosted software. So what is the purpose of Success Factors? The purpose of it is uh, to manage the entire HR business process of an organization. Let's look at an example. Imagine there is an organization with employees. It could be 10 or 10,000 employees. It makes no difference. However, when you have employees, certain things must be managed for them. Things like employees must be paid a regular salary. Compensation can take the form of bonuses or sales commissions. Time and attendance, which records how many days a specific employee worked, how many annual leave, sick leave, long service leave he has taken, and things like that. Training. Employee must be trained to do their jobs more effectively and improve themselves. Performance management. Their managers must manage their performance so that their appraisals and bonuses can be determined at the end of the year. HR documents. Employees must have access to documents such as their pay slips, employee certificates, referral documents, uh, documents that are required during their retirement and so on. Recruitment. New employees must be hired and onboarding. Those new employees must be integrated into the organization. So these are some of the most critical HR and employee management processes and sophisticated software is required to manage these things which SAP success factors can provide. Overview of SAP success factors. Lars Dahlgaard founded it in 2001 and SAP acquired it in 2011. As I mentioned before, success factors is one of the world's most widely used HR software application. According to SAP, it is used by more than 12,000 customers in over 200 countries worldwide. It has over 191 million users as well. Its popularity stems from its wide range of functionalities, enabling organizations to manage their employees' end-to-end -end HR business processes very effectively. It competes with HR applications like Workday, Oracle, Ceridian, Bamboo HR, PeopleStrong and others. Using either SAP BTP or other middleware software like MuleSoft, success factors can be integrated with other SAP applications such as S4HANA and also with other third-party applications such as Oracle and Salesforce. Now let's take a look at the different types of modules success factors has got to offer. So the success factors modules are divided into three main categories, core HR, talent management, reporting and analytics. So modules under core HR are SAP Success Factors Employee Central and SAP Success Factors Employee Central Payroll. Modules under talent management are performance and goals, compensation, recruiting, onboarding, learning, succession and development. And there is reporting and analytics, which is not further divided into subcategories, but it sits across all modules from an analytics perspective. Now let's take a look at the modules under core HR to start with. The first one is Employee Central. As previously stated, all organizations must perform some core HR activities regardless of their size. Time and attendance management, document management, employee master data management, and HR document management are some of the examples of these activities. And this is precisely what SuccessFactors Employee Central provides. Employee Central Payroll. This module processes payroll for an organization's employees. It includes automated payroll calculation, proactive payroll information, self-service, and automated payroll management. Now let's take a look at the modules under talent management. The first one is performance and goals. This module assists organizations in aligning their strategy and goals, improving employee performance through ongoing coaching and feedback, and identifying and rewarding top talent. Employee goal management, continuous performance management, 360 degree feedback and evaluations and guided action planning are all available through performance and goals module. Compensation management. Managing employee compensation can be complex, especially for large organizations with hundreds of thousands of employees. This success factors module assists businesses in developing and managing strategic compensation programs, aligning with the needs of their employees, the company and their budget. It includes guided compensation planning, continuous rewards, and personalized recognition programs. Recruiting. Identifying the right talent is critical for any organization. Organizations now use modern recruiting techniques to recruit new and talented employees. They use things like social media platforms, 
virtual reality communications application tracking systems in order to do so the recruiting module offers engaging candidate experiences global and diverse talent sourcing candidate relationship management and comprehensive applications management functionalities onboarding organizations require a robust onboarding process to seamlessly onboard new employees after they are hired not only does the success factors onboarding module support onboarding but it also supports offboarding crossboarding and rehire programs learning success factors learning module offers innovative capabilities that can assist organizations in developing a culture of continuous learning through a corporate learning management system it provides a modern and engaging learning experience extended enterprise learning and automated compliance training succession and development this module can assist organizations in developing the talent required to meet business objectives while providing visibility and planning capabilities to support future growth it includes skill based development planning skill and leadership development talent reviews and collaboration tools finally reporting and analytics analytics is critical for clearly understanding the data's hidden metrics and insights with trusted intelligence the analytics solutions within success factors assist organizations in making better business decisions they can investigate hiring diversity turnover and performance trends using integrated data from multiple modules within success factors then you can see how investments in people impact their business results and share trends and insights with compelling visualizations sap success factors offer three different types of analytic solutions they are workforce analytics workforce planning and enterprise analytics please use the following links that you can see on the slide if you would like to learn more about sap success factors the next product we are going to discuss is sap business technology platform sap btp stands for business technology platform but previously it used to be called as sap cloud platform and in march 2021 sap changed its name to business technology platform BTP is a platform that provides a database data warehouse analytics integration and programming tools. You can use this platform to meet your business needs without building and maintaining the infrastructure typically associated with developing and launching these applications. In simple words, SAP BTP provides pre-built tools for building applications, integrating one product with another, uh, using the database as a service and utilizing services such as machine learning and artificial intelligence. without having to build complex tools from scratch this is what's meant as platform as a service so what is the distinction between platform as a service software as a service infrastructure as a service and on premise the user manages the data and applications in platform as a service while the service provider handles everything else for example suppose you want to create a web application that can be integrated with sap s4 hana when you use middleware like btp You only need to write code to build your application. SAP manages the development tools, database, integration APIs, network, user management, server, operating system, and storage required to develop and run your code. The benefit of this model is that you can focus your efforts on developing the application rather than managing the software and administrative tasks beneath it. Platform as a service examples include SAP BDP, Amazon AWS, Elastic Beanstalk, OpenShift, Microsoft Azure has a platform as a service component and there are numerous other products on the market. Software as a service. So regarding software as a service, the service provider manages everything including the application. The user only manages the data and uses the functionalities to carry out daily tasks. Some examples are Dropbox, Google Drive, Gmail, Salesforce and SAP SuccessFactors. Infrastructure as a service. They are cloud-based services in which the users pay as they go for services such as storage, networking and virtualization. Still, the user manages other things such as the operating system, middleware, data and applications. Essentially, you lease the infrastructure from the vendor and host whatever application you want to on top of it. Amazon AWS, Rackspace, Google Computing Engine and there are so many other infrastructure as a service provider in the market. on premise the user manages everything in the on premise model the software is installed on a server in the same building as the company the user or consumer is accountable for the entire package 
Now let's take a look at the solutions offered by BTP. They are divided into four main categories. They are database and data management, analytics, application development and integration, and intelligent technologies. Now let's take a look at these capabilities one by one. The first one is database and data management. This category includes database and data management solutions as the name implies. As you may know, SAP provides various database options, including SAP HANA, SAP HANA in the cloud, and uh, SAP IQ, which is Sybase IQ. It also provides solutions for master data management across the entire organization. You can subscribe to any of these solutions to manage your organization's data or host a custom application you are developing. The next one is analytics. Analytics is critical for any organization because analytics assists you in identifying, interpreting and communicating meaning meaningful patterns in data. Finance, procurement, employee information, demand and supply chain are all business critical KPIs that can be linked to any of these analytics tools which will present you with information in a readable format and let you know precisely what is going on in your organization. BTP provides a variety of business intelligence and enterprise planning solutions. So basically you can integrate SAP cloud and on-premise applications to the analytics functionality in BTP to get valuable insights from the data. The next one is application development and integration. Many customers use SAP BTP primarily for integration and application development. Regarding integration, BTP provides customers with pre-built integration libraries and APIs that allow them to easily integrate their SAP systems with other SAP systems and third-party systems such as Salesforce and Oracle. That is what is called as the integration suite that is um, available in the SAP BTP. The next one is extension suite. An extension is a self-contained web application that can be integrated with any SAP product to enhance functionality and meet an end-to-end -end business process requirement. For example, assume I work for a company that requires a web application that is used to recruit new employees. I can write code, build a new application on BTP and integrate it with S4HANA or SuccessFactors to provide users with a seamless end-to-end -end business process execution. BTP provides out-of-the-box tools and services to help me develop and integrate my custom-built application with other SAP products and third-party applications. BTP offers tools like Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, Kima, and Cloud Development Kits. You can develop applications using different programming languages such as ABAP, Java, JavaScript, Python, etc. Intelligent Technologies The Internet of Things, Edge Services, Intelligent Robotic Process Automation, Conversational AI, and AI Business Services are examples of intelligent technologies that is offered by BTP. Users can use these features and integrate them with their SAP products. So what are some examples of intelligent technology applications? Take for example the Internet of Things, which can be used for various purposes. For example, logistics companies can monitor all of their trucks and collect data such as their speed, braking pattern, how much brake a driver takes, what route is the most economical, what parts of the truck needs to be changed, and when they need to be changed, uh, when a car needs to be serviced, and much more. So robotic process automation technology assists you in identifying and automating repeatable tasks. Conversational AI technologies can be used to, to create intelligent chatbots. I mentioned intelligent chatbots because they are artificial intelligence technology and can thus learn and adjust their responses over time. You can now subscribe to any of these services using BTP rather than building those applications from scratch. Please use the links on the slide in order to learn more about SAP BTP. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Cloud Application Lifecycle Management, CALM. It is also known as Cloud ALM. When SAP released Cloud ALM, many people wondered if it was simply a cloud-hosted solution manager. The answer is no. As the name implies, Cloud ALM is a cloud application built from the ground up by SAP and hosted on the SAP Business Technology Platform. So it is a brand new ALM application that was developed by SAP and not just a solution manager hosted on cloud. As we discussed previously, SAP Solution Manager is a well-known ALM tool that SAP offers to its customers and it is free of cost and includes numerous functionalities. However, the problem with Solution Manager was that configuring and maintaining these functionalities became extremely difficult. Because it was an on-premise application, 
it requires resources to install, configure and maintain it, which costs the customers money. Customers have long requested that SAP develop a cloud-based ALM tool to replace Solution Manager, and SAP has finally done just that. SAP Cloud ALM is a cloud application, so from a technical standpoint, SAP installs and maintains the application, and customers are immediately drawn to it because they do not have to spend money installing and maintaining it. SAP has also promised that Cloud ALM will be simple to configure and use, which makes it even more appealing to customers. So does that mean the Cloud ALM is the way of the future? The answer is yes. SAP confirmed at the recent SAP ALM summit that the solution manager will be supported only until 2027, implying that the company will focus its efforts on developing Cloud ALM in the future. Now let's take a look at the SAP CALM's capabilities. Its functionalities are primarily classified as Cloud ALM for implementation and Cloud ALM for operations. In the implementation phase, you design, build, test, and deploy the software the way you would do in any other waterfall model. And during the operation phase, you may encounter issues. So you may have to detect those incidents, analyze the root cause, resolve the problem, and then automate the solution so that the same issue can be resolved without human intervention when it occurs once again. What you see on the screen is the Cloud ALM implementation process view. So the steps are as follows design, build, test, and deploy. You create SAP system functionalities based on business requirements during the design phase. Fit to standard workshops should be held to convert those business requirements into standard SAP processes. You begin configuring the software when the design is finished. The configurations this should then be tested. Finally, you will then deploy and go live with the product or solution. These are the various technical functionalities covered by the Cloud ALM for the implementation process. The ones with a small asterisk indicate that those features are planned to be available in the later versions of the SAP CALM. The second category is Cloud ALM for operations, and this is the process view. As previously stated, once the product is live, you must monitor that product for any issues. Determine the problems, then determine the underlying cause of why it occurs, solve the problem, after that automate the issue resolution process. These are the technical functionalities that make the Cloud ALM for operations possible. It has various monitoring functionalities that allow you to monitor end-to-end -end business processes, integrates multiple SAP and non-SAP applications, performance monitoring, incident management, and so on. So what are the solutions that SAP Cloud ALM supports? SAP Cloud ALM was designed with Cloud applications in mind, but it also includes some features available for on-premise as for HANA systems. SAP has created a website that lists various solutions that Cloud ALM supports. You can filter based on the SAP application or the Cloud ALM functionality. I have included a link to this website in the slides. Demo system. SAP provides a free Cloud ALM demo system to anyone. An S user ID is not required to access a Cloud demo system. SAP has provided some predefined roles with usernames and passwords as shown on the screen. You can use any of these to access the relevant content in the demo system. For example, if I'm a project manager, I can log in as Paul to view the project management functionalities provided by Cloud ALM. You can access the demo system using the link that is provided in the slide. So how do I request a Cloud ALM system? You will need an S user ID with admin access to request a Cloud ALM system from SAP because Cloud ALM is a cloud-based application and it should be associated with a customer account. So if you request that a Cloud ALM tenant be provisioned for your organization, you must use your organization's S user ID. So basically you can navigate to the Cloud ALM page in the SAP support portal. There's also this request button. SAP claims that provisioning a Cloud ALM tenant takes only 15 minutes, which is fantastic. Please use the following link that you can see on the slide if you would like to learn more about SAP CALM. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Ariba. SAP Ariba is a cloud-based procurement and supply chain platform that helps companies buy, sell, and manage their cash flow. It provides various tools and features to help businesses streamline their procurement processes, including sourcing, procurement, invoicing, and payment management. It was initially founded in 1996 by seven engineers, and SAP acquired Ariba in 2012 
for $4.3 billion. Let's take a look at the different types of Ariba solutions. The first one is strategic sourcing. SAP Ariba strategic sourcing solutions enable you to manage all aspects of your sourcing, contracting, and spend analysis processes. Procurement solutions. SAP Ariba offers some procurement solutions that helps you with guided buying, spot buy, and invoice management. SAP Business Network for Supply Chain. It is a platform for collaboration that enables buyers to share real-time information with contract manufacturers and suppliers. SAP Business Network for Procurement. It is also a platform that allows suppliers and buyers to connect and transact over the internet. SAP Business Network for Trading Partners. It is another platform that enables suppliers to collaborate virtually and instantly with customers on bids, contracts, orders, catalogs, invoices, and payments via a single global platform. SAP Ariba Cloud Integration Gateway. SAP Ariba offers an integration tool that makes it simple to connect SAP ECC and s backend backend systems to trading partners and Ariba solutions. If you would like to learn more about SAP Ariba, please use the links that you can see on the slide. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Integrated Business Planning, IBP. This cloud-based solution powered by SAP HANA is a supply chain solution. It is viewed as a replacement for SAP's on-premise version of SAP SCM. SAP IBP helps organizations collaborate effectively across organizational verticals, contains a user-friendly interface, and offers real-time simulations for various business scenarios to meet an organization's growing business demand, supply, and finance models. SAP IBP is an essential component of the s HANA ecosystem, and it was created specifically to assist various businesses in managing complex supply chains and streamlining operations at multiple levels. Let's take a look at the functionalities offered as part of SAP IBP. The first one is Sales and Operations. Sales and Operations is a core aspect of IBP. It helps organizations to predict demand and manage supply using real-time planning. It offers simulation and comparison of multiple scenarios. Forecasting and Demand Management Automated statistical forecasting processes and machine learning algorithms can assist organizations in better forecasting demand to improve the fulfillment and reduce inventory. It does that with the help of functions such as demand planning, advanced demand sensing, statistical models and time series analysis. Inventory planning and op optimization. By planning and optimizing inventory, organizations can reduce the supply chain risk and the risk of running out of inventory when needed. Supply planning. Functions such as multi-level planning, supply planning, and rough cut planning help organizations plan their end-to-end -end supply chain, from sourcing the raw materials to sending the finished products to the customers. Please use the links on the slides to learn more about SAP IBP. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Conquer. SAP Conquer is a cloud-based travel and expense management software. It was acquired by SAP in 2014 for $8.3 billion. SAP Conquer offers three main functionalities. Conquer Expense, Conquer Travel, and Conquer Invoice. Conquer Expense. Employees in an organization can create, submit, and approve expense reports using any device. Their managers can get a single view of all employee spending, which will help them better understand expenses. It will help them better manage budgets, forecast accurately, and make more strategic business decisions. Conquer Travel. Employees can book their travel using Conquer's travel functionality, and it can be integrated with different types of travel agencies, and the invoice payables can be automated as well. It will also give the management transparency on where and how often their employees travel. Conquer Invoice. SAP Conquer can be integrated with multiple ERP systems, and the invoices can be captured automatically using the electronic invoice capture functionality. Management can track and control the timing of payments to pay vendors on time and take advantage of early payment discounts. Please use the links that you can see on the slide to learn more about SAP Conquer. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Field Glass. SAP Field Glass was founded in 1999 and was acquired by SAP in 2014. It is a cloud-based software platform that helps organizations manage their contingent workforce and services procurement processes. 
It provides tools for sourcing, engaging and managing non-employee workers, including temporary staff, freelancers, independent contractors and external service providers. Some of the key features of SAP Field Glass are vendor management, workforce management, sourcing and analytics. Vendor management. It allows organizations to manage their relationships with the external service providers, including tracking vendor performance and compliance. Workforce management. It helps organizations to optimize their use of contingent workers, including the ability to schedule and track time and attendance, manage benefits and payroll, and monitor compliance with labor laws and regulations. Sourcing provides tools for identifying and engaging qualified candidates for contingent work, including the ability to post job listings, review resumes, and conduct interviews. Analytics. It offers a range of analytics and reporting tools that help organizations better understand and optimize their use of contingent workers and service providers. SAP Field Glass is designed to be flexible and scalable, and it can be customized to meet the specific needs of different organizations and industries. Large enterprises in a variety of industries, including finance, healthcare, and manufacturing, typically use SAP Field Glass. As usual, I have uh, provided some links on the slides through which you can learn more about SAP Field Glass. The next product we are going to discuss is SAP Analytics Cloud, SAC. SAP Analytics Cloud is also a cloud-based software platform that provides various tools for data analysis, visualization, and reporting. It is designed to help organizations gain insights from their data and make informed decisions. Here are some of the key features of SAP Analytics Cloud. The first one is data integration. SAP Analytics Cloud can connect to many data sources, including databases, spreadsheets, and cloud-based applications. This enables users to combine and analyze data from different sources, providing a more comprehensive view of their businesses. Analytical tools. SAP Analytics Cloud includes machine learning algorithms that can help users discover patterns and trends in their data, and predictive analytics tools that can help them forecast future outcomes. Visualization. SAP Analytics Cloud offers a range of visualization options, including charts, graphs, and maps, which can help users communicate their findings. Collaboration. SAP Analytics Cloud allows users to share their findings and insights with others in their organization and to work together on data analysis and decision making. Mobile access. SAP Analytics Cloud is available on mobile devices, enabling users to access their data and insights on the go. Predefined templates. It includes a range of predefined templates that can help users quickly create standard reports and analysis. Customization. Analytics Cloud can be customized to meet specific needs of different organizations and industries. Overall, SAP Analytics Cloud is a powerful tool that helps organizations to gain insights from their data and make better decisions. It is particularly well suited for large enterprises that need to analyze and understand large volumes of data from various different sources. Please use the links in the slides to learn more about SAP Analytics Cloud. Chapter 3 SAP Technical Architecture Until now, we discussed about different types of SAP products. In this chapter, we will discuss the technical architecture of an SAP on-premise system. An SAP system's architecture can be divided into three layers at a high level. They are presentation layer, application layer, and database layer. Presentation layer. This is where the users access an SAP system via channels such as SAP Logon Pad, SAP Business Client, Fiori, web browsers, or mobile apps. Application layer. This is where an SAP system's ABAP or Java application server is located. The application server is the foundation of an SAP system. It is the engine that receives and processes all requests and interacts with the database and retrieves the necessary information and return it to the presentation layer. Database layer. This is where a system's database is located. These three layers are the primary architectural principle of all software applications that follow the client-server model. And SAP systems are no exception. Let us now get into the specifics of the ABAP system components. An ABAP system comprises of an ABAP Server Central Services Instance, abbreviated as ASCS, and an application server instance. An instance is a type of administrative unit that consists of several components. ASCS, for example, is an instance and the application server is another instance. 
An ABAP system has a single ASCS instance, but it can have multiple application server instances, depending on the system's expected load. The ASCS and the application server instance can be installed on the same server or separate hosts for high availability purpose. An ABAP system has a system identifier, also known as an SID, and individual instance numbers. SIDs are typically three-letter alphanumeric character combinations and an instance has two-letter numeric characters. For example, the SID of an SAP system could be PE0 and the instance number of ASCS could be 00, whereas the instance number of the application server could be 01, 02 or 03, depending on the number of application servers it has. SIDs and instance numbers are assigned during the installation of an SAP system. Let us now take a look at the components of SAP ABAP Server Central Services. ASCS comprises three components, a separate start service, a message server, and an NQ server. The start service in the ASCS communicates with the start service in the application servers to keep track of the status of the application server within a specific SAP system. Assume that an SAP system has three application servers, for example. When an application server is started, it logs into the ASCS to report its runtime status so that the ASCS is aware of how many application servers are on and how many of them are off. The ASCS also includes a message server. The message server facilitates communication between application servers. It also distributes the load if multiple application servers are available, ensuring that a single application server does not handle all requests. The NQ server is then in charge of managing logs. It ensures that no two transactions or users are simultaneously attempting to update the same field in the same table. Thus, synchronization issues are avoided. So if I'm editing a program that updates a table, the NQ server will lock the table and releases it to others once I'm done updating it. In a nutshell, the ASCS does not handle any dialogue requests and does not perform any calculations or retrieve data from the database. However, it serves as an administrative unit within the SAP system, managing the application servers beneath it. Let us now discuss the components of an application server. An application server comprises various components such as an ABAP dispatcher, a gateway, an internet communication manager, a start service and work processes. Let us now go over each of these components one by one. The first one is ABAP dispatcher. The ABAP dispatcher distributes work processes based on the type of request received. Gateway. The gateway allows the SAP system to communicate with other SAP and non-SAP systems via RFC, which stands for Remote Function Call. It is a functionality that communicates between other SAP systems and non-SAP systems over TCP IP protocol. ICM. Internet Communication Manager. It is a program that handles HTTPS and SMTP requests from the internet. So depending on the type of request, either the ABAP dispatcher, the gateway or the ICM handles that request. For example, if the system receives a request from the SAP logon pad, it is dealt with by the ABAP dispatcher. If the request comes from another SAP system via an RFC connection, the gateway will handle it. If the request comes from a web dinpro application or a web browser, the Internet Communication Manager will take it. Work Processes Work Processes are a collection of programs that handle various requests that arrive at the SAP system via the ABAP dispatcher. Work Processes are classified as Dialog, Update, Batch, Print or NQ. For example, if the request is a Dialog request, the ABAP dispatcher routes it to the Dialog work process and so on. Now let's take a look at these five different types of work processes. Dialog the dialog work process handles all requests made by an active user, program, RFC, or HTTP request. Dialog work processes are involved when a request is processed in the front end by the SAP system. You must configure at least two dialog work processes for each application server. However, you can configure more if necessary. Update. The database is updated using the update work process. For example, suppose you perform a calculation and need to update a database table with the result. The update work process is responsible for updating a specific field in a database table. An application server must have at least one update work process. Batch. 
batch jobs are programs that can run in the background without requiring user interaction. Time consuming and resource intensive calculations are sometimes configured to run in the background, so they do not interfere with the front end users real time activities. In an ABAP system, at least two batch work processes are required, but more can, can be configured. For example, if your company needs to run many batch programs, you may require more batch work processes. Print. This work process manages and processes all print requests, printing work orders or purchase orders, for example. NQ. This work process handles object locks and unlocks. Locks as previously discussed in the ASCS component, are an essential component of an SAP system that ensures two users do not update a table or entry simultaneously. So suppose someone or a program is executing a transaction. In that case, the NQ work process will lock the table, allowing only one person or a program to update it at any given time. This will prevent data inconsistencies in an SAP system. The lock mechanism is used by almost all applications that need to update databases, not just SAP applications. And this work process in the application server is only required if you do not have an ASCS instance. Otherwise, the NQ processes will be handled by the ASCS instances NQ server. At a high level, this is the architecture of an SAP ABAP on-premise system. You can use the links that you can see on the slide to learn more about SAP on-premise technical architecture. Chapter 4, SAP ABAP. ABAP stands for Advanced Business Application Programming. It was developed in the early 1980s, and it is the primary programming language used to create SAP on-premise applications, such as SAP R3, ECC, S4HANA, SRM, CRM, APO, etc. SAP customers can also use ABAP to build custom applications or alter the SAP on-premise system's source code. SAP released ABAP objects, an object-oriented extension to ABAP, along with R3 release 4.6 in 1999. All ABAP programs are stored in the SAP database. Unlike Java or C++ programs, they are not stored in separate external files. All ABAP code in the database exists in two forms. Source code, which can be viewed and edited using the ABAP workbench tools, and generated code, a binary representation similar to Java bytecode. The runtime system, which is part of the SAP kernel, controls the execution of SAP programs. The runtime system is in charge of processing ABAP statements, controlling screen flow logic, and responding to events, such as a user clicking on a screen button. In this regard, it can be compared to the Java virtual machine. The database interface is a critical component of the ABAP runtime system, as it converts database-independent ABAP statements, which are known as open SQL statements, into messages understood by the underlying DBMS. The database interface handles all communication with the relational database on behalf of ABAP programs. It also includes extra features such as stable and frequently accessed data buffering in the application service local memory. Developers can use SAP NetWeaver application service, ABAP Workbench, or SAP BTP's development tools to create ABAP programs. ABAP Workbench offers different types of tools to help developers write ABAP code. They are as follows. ABAP Workbench. It is a development environment. It can be accessed using SAP Transaction SEAT. ABAP Editor. An ABAP Editor is a tool for writing ABAP code. Like any other source code editor, it is a programming language on context sensitive. It highlights the syntax elements of your programs and includes many features to help you develop them such as autocomplete, compile, build, run, help menu, and so on. ABAP Dictionary. This is a system-wide repository for creating and maintaining database objects, such as domains, data elements, and transparent tables. ABAP Painter. This tool is used to design and create graphical user interface elements for your ABAP program. Function Builder. This tool is used to create and maintain function modules. Function modules are sub-programs that contain a collection of reusable statements with parameters for importing and exporting data. Class Builder. Similar to Function Builder, the Class Builder helps you build and maintain classes used in an ABAP program. Web Application Builder. This tool helps you create web applications using ABAP. You can use the links that are provided in the slide to learn more about SAP ABAP. Chapter 5. 
what happens in an SAP project? SAP projects are typically complex, with implementation times ranging from a few months to a few years, depending on the number of solutions implemented and the organization's complexity. SAP projects typically go through six stages. They are project preparation, blueprint, implementation, testing, go live, and support. Let's take a look at these phases one by one. The first one is project preparation. This is where the project begins and detailed planning takes place. During this phase, the business processes that must be implemented are identified and solutions are planned to adapt those business processes. Objectives, scope, deliverables, timelines, resources, and budgets are also planned. This is the most crucial phase of an SAP project and attention to detail is really important because it will determine the project's success or failure. Every small and large element must be approached and discussed proactively and considered when planning. Blueprint. During this phase, Blueprint workshops are held to analyze the customer's requirements against standard SAP business processes. The gaps will then be identified and a plan will be developed to address those gaps. Either the current business processes will be changed to confirm to SAP's standard business processes or custom codes will be created in the SAP system to meet customer requirements. Implementation. When the business processes are complete, the technical consultants will begin installing SAP applications, while the functional consultants will begin configuring the business processes, workflows, and reports. The developers will write any custom code that is required during this phase. Testing. This is an important stage in an SAP project. Four types of testing usually takes place, and they are as follows. Unit testing, system integration testing, or SIT, user acceptance testing, or UAT, and then dress rehearsal. As an example, consider the following system landscape. Functional consultants will configure the business processes in the development system. The configuration changes will then be transferred to a different client within the development system to perform the unit testing. Unit testing is the first test performed after something has been configured in the development system. The initial basic level of testing is completed quickly before the next level of detailed testing begins. Client 300 in this example is the development client and client 400 is the unit testing client. SIT, system integration testing. The changes are then transferred to the SIT system for system integration testing when the unit testing is completed in the development system. This system will be linked to both SAP and non-SAP applications. As a result, developers will be able to test the end-to-end -end scenarios. UAT, user acceptance testing. After the system integration testing is completed successfully, the changes will be transferred to the UAT system for user acceptance testing. As the name suggests, this is where end users will test the business processes and configurations before approving the go live. A defect is created when a user discovers a bug in the configuration. The consultants will then resolve the defect in the development system and they will repeat the process up until the UAT system. When all the UAT is completed, the project is ready for the go live. Dress rehearsal. However, just before the actual go live, a dress rehearsal is held to test it out. Every step will be performed during the dress rehearsal to replicate the exact actions performed during the go live process. This process will assist in proactively identifying issues and ensuring a safe go live. A dedicated client in the UAT system may be created to perform the dress rehearsal or a dedicated dress rehearsal system may be created. The transports will be moved first followed by the data load to the dress rehearsal system. The time required to complete all these steps is calculated to estimate how long it will take to achieve them during the production system's go live. Go live. Then comes the actual go live. After the dress rehearsal, the production cutover will begin. The transports will first be transferred to the production system, followed by the data load. Users will be unlocked and they will be able to log in and begin conducting business transactions. Finally, support. The support team will usually provide four to six weeks of hypercare support. All defects will be prioritized and resolved as soon as possible during this time. When the hypercare period is over, the business as usual period begins and the regular support process will take effect. This is how an SAP project is implemented at a high level. You can use the link that you can see on the slide to learn more about the different types of SAP project phases. Chapter 6. What type of jobs can you get in the SAP field? There are different types of roles available in the SAP ecosystem. Let's take a look at the, some of the most common ones. 
end user an end user works in a specific business process area such as finance procurement sales or marketing and uses sap software daily to do their job for example you could work as a finance officer in a business you you will be processing invoices preparing balance sheets managing records and receipts reconciling daily monthly and yearly transactions and much more and all of these things are part of your job as an end user you will use sap's ecc or s4hana product to carry out these tasks you will specifically use the fico module within sap ecc or s4hana system working as an end user is an excellent way to learn sap especially if you are starting your career functional consultants a functional consultant is someone who configures the sap system to meet the needs of the company before they can be used productively all sap systems must be configured configuring an sap system entails creating master data establishing rules and establishing business process flows a functional consultant's other responsibilities include writing functional and technical specs performing testing providing support and training end users becoming a functional consultant can be a logical next step if you are already an end user of an sap system depending on your experience you can choose one of the modules like finance procurement material management human resources supply chain management etc technical consultant a technical consultant installs upgrades integrates maintains and operate sap systems from a technical standpoint they are also known as basis consultants technical sap consultants should have good knowledge in operating systems databases networks servers and sap technical configurations developer you can become an sap developer if you are good at programming and learning the abap programming language sap's native programming language abap is used to develop all on premise sap systems sap also employs several other programming languages including java html5 javascript and mobile development languages to create applications that can be integrated with sap products via the sap business technology platform sap security consultants an sap security consultant is responsible for designing and implementing the security strategy for an sap system this includes defining user roles and privileges setting up authentication and authorization controls and ensuring that the sap system complies with relevant security standards and regulations the sap security consultant may also perform security assessments identify and address security vulnerabilities and provide guidance to the organizations on best practices for sap security sap project manager an sap project manager is responsible for leading and coordinating the implementation of sap software within an organization this includes developing project plans budgets and schedules and managing resources stakeholders and risks the sap project manager may work with a team of sap consultants technical consultants and other subject matter experts to ensure that the project is delivered on time within budget and to the required quality standards the sap project manager may also be responsible for managing relationship with the sap vendor or system integrator and ensuring that the sap system is properly configured and customized to meet the organization's needs in addition the sap project manager may be responsible for training end users coordinating user acceptance testing and supporting the transition to go live other roles on top of the above mentioned roles many other roles are available such as testers test managers business architects technical solution architects delivery managers cutover managers trainers and support personnel the type of role you choose should depend on the education skills and experience you already possess chapter 7 how to learn sap many people wonder how to learn sap or what type of sap courses they should take sap is a vast subject with hundreds of different product types and sub modules within them it is challenging to recommend just one sap course or product to learn my advice is always to ask yourself what your specific interests are are you good at finance supply chain management marketing or sales or are you a technical person who enjoys working with network servers and databases now let's take a look at some of the resources that you can use to learn sap the first on the list is open sap courses sap has established a free online academy they offer online tutorials on a variety of sap products and business processes 
Their courses are designed to accommodate everyone from the beginners to the seasoned professional. You will also have the opportunity to take an online exam and receive a certificate if you pass the exam. The great thing about Open SAP is that the courses and training are delivered by SAP themselves, so you can be confident that they are subject matter experts who know what they are talking about. It is also free. SAP.com, which is SAP's official website. This may appear straightforward, but many people are unaware that SAP's website contains a wealth of information about every product they offer. The website on the screen contains an alphabetical list of all SAP products. I've included the link in the link section. You can click on the product of interest to find information such as key benefits, capabilities, and the brochure for the specific product, which is a one pager with product information. The next one is SAP Help Portal. The SAP Help Portal is where you can find product documentation, learning journeys, and much more. Product documentation is free and available to anyone, but you need a Learning Hub subscription to access some of the learning journeys. SAP Communities. As the name suggests, it is an online community for all SAP related topics. It has over 3 million users and they have written over 130,000 blogs. And the community as a whole has answered more than 1 million questions. It also includes webinars, tutorials, and invitations to upcoming SAP events, among other things. Anyone can register for free. SAP Learning Hub SAP Learning Hub provides online learning content to help you prepare for SAP certification exams. Because the learning journeys are explicitly tailored to your role and learning objectives, they are appropriate for everyone, whether a student or an experienced professional. To access it, as previously stated, you must subscribe to one of the Learning Hub editions. Several editions are available, including a 14-day free trial. There is a professional edition, a solution edition, a business edition, and a student edition. Pricing is determined by the selected edition and the country in which you reside. SAP Training and Certification Shop This is the official SAP Training and Certification Facility. SAP provides online and in-person training and certification exams. SAP official training and certifications have a solid global reputation. I advise starting by learning as much as possible using freely available resources. Then decide which area of SAP you want to specialize in. Then before doing the certification in that chosen area, subscribe to one of the Learning Hub subscriptions to enroll in a proper SAP course. SAP Press SAP has an official publishing partner called SAP Press. It contains many books from the basics to in-depth exploration of complex SAP topics. You will also find good blogs written by them on various SAP topics. YouTube videos and online tutorials. There are numerous YouTube channels, blogs and online learning platforms where you can learn about SAP and its products. SAP has some uh, YouTube channels where they create content specifically for students. SAP, SAP TV, SAP Technology, SAP Developers, SAP HANA Academy, Service and Support SAP, SAP Ariba, SAP Field Glass, and many more are the channel names. On top of that, many other YouTube channels and blogs run by people like me provide educational content about SAP topics as well. These are all free, and I always advise students to start learning with freely available content before investing in any course or tutorial. I have provided links to some of these YouTube channels in the slides. Chapter 8. How to access free SAP demo systems. Theoretical learning is beneficial, but cannot replace practical experience, especially if you are a beginner in the SAP field and looking for hands-on experience. You will receive free access to the SAP software that you are learning about when registering for any SAP course through the SAP training and certifications shop. Furthermore, SAP provides free trials for almost all of its software. For some products, you get a 14-day trial period, while for others, you get a 3-month trial period or 30-day trial period. If the software is on-premise, you can download and install it on a small server or a powerful laptop or a desktop. If the software is cloud-based, such as Ariba or SuccessFactors, you can access it through your web browser. Now, there are mainly three ways through which you can access SAP trial systems or demo systems. The first one is SAP Software Trials website. On SAP's official website, there is a section for software trials. You will see trials available for many SAP products, especially the latest cloud products. 
All you have to do is choose the one you want to try. Then click on the start your 30 day trial. Create an account for free and start using the system with the username and password that will be provided to you by SAP. The second one is the SAP developers website. You can go to this website if you're a developer and would like to download tools that will help you program in ABAP. As you can see, you can download software development kits, access the BTP trial system, download HANA Express Edition, which is a light version of the SAP HANA database. You can download libraries and so much more. The last one is SAP Cloud Appliance Library. SAP offers a fully configured demo environment in its Cloud Appliance Library. It is integrated with cloud providers like Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS, and Google Cloud. You can transfer the demo environment from the Cloud Appliance Library to one of these cloud infrastructures and install the systems over there. Then you can start using them for 30 days. You will require two accounts, one for the Cloud Appliance Library and the other for your cloud provider. Please note, the SAP demo software is free, but you may have to pay a subscription for the cloud infrastructure to the Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure, things like that. Last chapter, chapter nine, how to get a job in the field of SAP. I just wanted to remind you about the statistics we discussed in the first chapter about SAP customers, like 99 of the 100 largest customers in the world are SAP customers, 64% of the world's ice creams are produced by SAP customers, 78% of the world's food is distributed by SAP customers and many other things. What it tells us is that there are so many companies in the world that use SAP for their day-to-day -day operations. And SAP is acquiring so many new customers with the help of its latest cloud products. So there will be a lot of demand for SAP consultants globally. You can get a job in the SAP field by following a few simple steps. Here I have kept a fresh university graduate in mind while recommending these steps, but by tweaking it slightly, these steps apply to experienced professionals who want to change their careers to SAP. Firstly, identify your area of interest. You might have a college degree in a particular field like accounting, supply chain management or logistics or a computer science engineering degree. Based on your learning experience, decide on a specific niche within SAP. For example, if you got an accounting degree from university, you may want to choose to learn SAP as for HANA Finance. Or if you earned a computer science degree, you may want to become an SAP technical consultant. After deciding on your niche, try to learn about that using the resources we discussed in one of the previous chapters of this course, How to Learn SAP. In that chapter, I mentioned eight different resources through which you might learn about the particular niche that you are interested in. So do an online course or buy a book and start learning about that particular area you are interested in. Once you have made some progress in your learning, Test your knowledge by taking a certification exam. As I mentioned in the How to Learn SAP chapter, SAP's official training and certification shop offers courses and certification exams. Sit for the exam and you will get a certificate from SAP if you pass it. It is not just a good way of testing your knowledge in that field. Official SAP certifications are valuable when applying for a job. Then you can start applying for internships and graduate jobs in the SAP field. As I mentioned, so many organizations use SAP and are always looking for interns and fresh graduates who are willing to learn. Identify those companies by doing some research online and apply for those kinds of entry-level jobs. Sometimes you may not be able to get a job in the field of SAP directly. In those situations, you may want to try to get a job within a company that uses SAP for a different role. Once you start working in the company, switching to the SAP team might be easy. That is how I got my first job in the field of SAP. After finishing my master's degree, I started working in an engineering company in the technical project management team. While working in the team, I interacted pretty often with the SAP technical team and learned about the technical aspects of SAP products. I gained some practical experience by working and learning from that team. And on the side, I also did some SAP courses and got certifications. When there was an opening for an SAP technical consultant role within that same company, I applied for it. They offered me that position as I showed interest to learn and demonstrated my enthusiasm. This is not the only method. Some companies offer SAP roles to fresh university graduates without them having to do any courses or certifications. But preparing yourself by doing courses and certifications 
will place you in an advantageous position to secure an excellent job in the SAP field. Apart from this product knowledge, improve your soft skills like presentation, reading and writing skills. Create a good resume and update your LinkedIn profile. Start networking and ask people if they can help you get an internship in their company. We have come to the end of this course and I hope you gained the knowledge you require about SAP and its various products. If you found this course helpful, please do me a favor and recommend it to your friends who might benefit from it as well. If you have any questions, please email me and I will respond. Thank you so much for choosing to do this course and I wish you all the best.